Hi, I'm James McGuire from the New South Wales Office of Environment and Heritage. Between October and December of 2012, an in-stream flow of just over 200,000 megalitres was managed by OEH to benefit recruitment of Murray Cod. The Murray Cod is Australia's largest freshwater fish and it's only found in the Murray-Darling Basin, not found anywhere else in the world. It grows to 1.8 metres, it can grow up to 100 kilograms in weight, that's the largest one ever caught, and they can live between 60 and 80 years. So they're a very important species. Many reasons for the decline in Murray Cod over the last 40 years. Uh, there's been removal of optimal habitat, which are snags. Um, carp and other introduced species have had an impact on juvenile fish. River regulation means that nest sites aren't permanently inundated at the time of year that they need to be inundated. Wetlands, uh, which are primary habitat for fish, have dried out, uh, for, especially for juvenile fish. This has all acted over the last 50 years and Murray Cod have had a steady decline in that time. The aim of the event was to maintain a stable river level during the Murray Cod spawning season to maximise their chances of successfully breeding and boosting the population of Murray Cod in the lower reaches of the Murrumbidgee River. So Murray Cod are a nesting species. So what usually happens is the males will establish a nest site, the females will move in and lay the eggs. The males will then guard the eggs for approximately nine to 10 days. That will give the eggs time to hatch. The young then stay within the nest for another seven to eight days. After that time, they become free swimming and they disperse. This in-river environmental watering event was the largest environmental water use event in the Murrumbidgee to date and would not have been possible without a significant contribution from the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder as well as Living Murray Water and New South Wales Environmental Water. Despite significant flood events in January 2011 and March 2012, the river levels still hadn't been ideal for Murray Cod recruitment in the lower sections of the river. In fact, the inundation of the floodplain associated with the flood events, particularly in January 2011, caused significant black water events, which killed large numbers of Murray Cod in the river below Hay down to the junction. Well, uh, January uh, 2011 was uh, devastating for uh, our rivers here, uh, the Murrumbidgee at uh, Bell Reynolds. Uh, we had a massive uh, Murray Cod kill. Me and a couple of my mates went on my dad's billabong and we seen 20, 20 cod, I suppose. So we thought we'd go for a bit of a putt up or downstream and we come to a big billabong and we counted oh, 380 fish. We, we stopped there and it was just a, a fish cemetery from cod from sort of four pound to up to a metre long, you know, 80, 80 pound, 100 pound fish, it was, it was devastating. Several factors influenced the severity of the hypoxic blackwater event in January 2011. Firstly, the long duration since flooding had meant there was several decades worth of organic material left on the floodplain. And the second factor was the timing right in the middle of summer it meant that the water temperatures were really high and the organic material broke down rapidly and then returned to the river. When that's broken down by bacteria, it decreases the oxygen in the water. We've found that large Murray cod are very susceptible to low dissolved oxygen. Black water events in Australian river systems are natural. They only become a problem for native fish when they're severe and anoxic conditions develop. These environmental flow releases have maintained a stable but elevated river level throughout the entire Murray cod breeding season. So up to 62 days above 5,000 megalitres a day downstream of Darlington Point, we're hopeful that that's going to do the job for Murray Cod recruitment. Throughout the vast majority of the release period, the temperature in the river downstream of Darlington Point was above 17 degrees, which is thought to be optimal for survival of Murray Cod eggs. A monitoring team comprising of Charles State University and Department of Primary Industries Fisheries has been engaged by the Commonwealth Environmental Water Office to monitor the long-term effects of this environmental flow release. So as part of the monitoring for this environmental water event in the Murrumbidgee River, uh, we've caught Murray Cod larvae in our larval drift nets. So Murray Cod larvae drift uh, downstream with the environmental water. We have also uh, tracked adult Murray Cod uh, as they move through the river system. The rigorous environmental monitoring program which has been funded by the Commonwealth Environmental Water Office is crucial to understanding the success of this event and also in guiding the use of environmental water in similar events in future years. So we're using a multiple lines of evidence approach to assess whether this environmental watering event was successful. So far we've determined that larvae are around in the river at the expected time. We've also found that adult fish have moved in response to the environmental flow. Our next step is to look at juveniles and age them in association with the environmental flow. 
That whole picture together will be able to tell us the overall success of Murray Cod spawning and recruitment in association with this environmental flow. OEH is very appreciative of the significant efforts of State Water in managing this long-term, stable, medium river level for the benefit of the Murray Cod. The experiences gained by all the departments will be valuable in planning and managing future events to benefit native fish. 446, full of eggs. The New South Wales Office of Environment and Heritage believes this has been a successful water use event. We look forward to working with the other agencies and the Commonwealth Environmental Water Office in managing environmental water for the benefit of native fish in the future.